G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and I've just finished preparing this garden bed behind me. I had a question from one of you guys the other day that said, Mark, how do you prepare your garden beds for the new growing season? And it just so happens that I was doing that thing today. So I thought I'd film it and let you guys know how I prepare my garden beds for the new season. In this particular case, there's a new twist. I've never used wood chip before, so in this video, I'm going to be using wood chip as the mulch layer. And I'll discuss and talk about that as I go along. So stick around, I think this video is gonna be a lot of fun. Let's get into it. Right, yeah, let's have a walk through and have a look to see what's left in this old bed and why it needs rejuvenating. We've got some good coriander growing here. I might leave one or two of these plants in the bed. A couple of cabbages here that have come up from last season. I might separate them and, and see if I can replant them for cabbages this year. I think this is a sugar loaf. So they've come up in a little cluster, so I might preserve that. I'll also preserve this parsley. I'll try to keep that in the bed and not disturb it too much. I've got a heap of grasses. This looks like a nut grass. I'll just dig that up as much as I can and mulch it back into the bed. If I mulch it heavily, hopefully it'll help suppress that. I've got these cobbled pegs pull them out, get rid of them. Here's a rainbow chard over summer. No, we can over summer. You might over winter in other countries, your vegetables. Here we have to over summer them sometimes to let them go to seed. The red mustard, we've got quite a few. This, this is another self seeding plant that is really good to add the salads and to let go to seed so you can use the seeds in mustard dishes and making your own mustard paste and that type of thing. And I just like to let this one go to seed and keep coming up whenever it feels like a two. It does come up sometimes through summer accidentally and then it does it quite tough. It usually starts coming up now as the weather cools down and we get some really good mustard crops. Now the rest of this bed here I had onions in it last season there's some more parsley which I'll preserve. Uh, this is the old cucumber. That really did well for us through the heat of the, the heat of summer. It was a good crop. And now the rest of this bed needs needs doing. So yeah, it definitely needs a good going over. The soil here isn't bad, but it, you know, like it's a good medium. Now what I'm doing here is just digging in this coriander and a few other weeds. I'm pulling out the grasses and this weed here is a segmented weed that's really tough. I think it's actually some type of edible, but um, you know, wild weed edible, but I'm not interested in eating it. When you pull it, it breaks off in segments and each segment roots and it can go all through your garden. It's quite an annoying weed, so I pull that out and chuck it. But most of the coriander and the, and the other full-blown weeds, I'll just munge up like this in pieces. And they can go back in as worm feed. And uh, good structure for the soil. There's also some mustard here that I'm gonna dig there, dig those plants up and and smash up these roots so that all that nitrogen and nutrients that's been sucked up in those roots can go back into the soil and turn into beautiful worm food or bacteria food which in turn will help the plants flourish when I plant them in here. I'll keep this coriander even though I'm pretty positive 
I'm going to get a few more come up now that I've disturbed this bed and now winter's approaching it's our prime season for coriander and because I keep letting it seed constantly I, I just it just keeps coming up in our, in our garden but just in case I'll let this one go to full, fully seed I'll use some of the seeds in cooking and uh, I'll, let, I'll let the rest of them just fall out here I'll transfer some of the green. If there's too much in one spot, I'll transfer it over to here where there isn't as much. I get rid of any of the uh, weeds that I can see going to seed because I don't want to dig the seeds back into the garden. I'll chuck them. But otherwise, mostly everything else is just getting mossed back into the bed. You can actually see how rich this soil is. I'm digging all this grass back in. I'm going to get grass come back up. It's just a matter of managing weeds in your garden. I can pull out all the grass. I could go through hours and hours of de-weeding and de-grassing and I'll just have more weeds blow in on the wind and from the adjoining properties you know in the bushland and my beds will get infested with weeds and that again it, it's just that when you're growing your crops that's the best time to make sure you're vigilant in keeping the weeds down you can do that by just small hoeing around or by just hand pulling when the weeds are seedlings but if you go overboard and try to prepare your garden bed by pulling out every weed independently and, and all that, it's going to take you too long. And it's not a very pleasant job to do. I find that this is much easier. Just chop out the weeds, chop them up and put them back into the soil so that they can be eaten by worms and bacteria. So you can see worms around the place wonderful and this is going to be even better once I get the manure put in here okay here's the silver beet if I left that in here it would come back this winter but you know what I think I'll just grow some more from seed or get some seedlings I think that can just get mulched back in Okay, nearly to the end. This hasn't taken me very long, probably about 10 minutes. And once I get to the end here, there's a whole heap of craters. I've just dug up things and smashed it to pieces. Um, you know, that's all that I wanted to do. I'll add the manure after I dig all, dig all this up. And it's after that, then I can start turning that manure into the soil and uh, then starting to smooth it out a little bit to turn into a proper garden bed. What I try to do, I don't always do it, but what I do try to do is when I'm digging my garden bed, I try not to compact it back down again and by walking over it, I try to dig it in a logical fashion so that the dug bits, I'm walking on the stuff that isn't dug yet but it's not always practical, but most of the time I try to make sure that once it is dug and tilled up that I don't start walking back on it and compact it down because that makes it harder for the vegetables and everything else to grow uh, later on. Now this stuff is stable manure from racehorses and they're fed a grain mix. They're not typically let out to pasture so they don't get as many weeds as other types of manure, horse manure can get if they're left to graze out into the open. Having said that, you're still going to get some grass weeds through your horse manure even if they are racehorse. 
or fed in the stables on mostly grains and that type of thing because some of the grains will go straight through them um, and turn out into the garden. Well, that's my experience anyway. The other thing I'd like to say is, although you know this is touted as really good manure because it's from the stables and it's unlikely to have as many weeds in it as your regular horse manure, I still buy regular horse manure. I don't really worry too much about the weeds that come up through because, you know, horse manure, weeds coming up in your garden, that's just a standard thing anyway. That happens to most people. So you can't go around trying to secure the best poo so that you won't get so many weeds in your garden um, because it's sort of impractical. Whatever horse manure or manure that you get in your garden, regardless of having weeds or anything through it, is going to be good for the soil. Now this manure we get for two dollars a bag. I think it's pretty good value because it's not like the the regular fertilizer you get from the store that's all been processed. You know processed blood and bone even organic and all that that's all good stuff and I do use it on my garden I'll use it here to supplement this horse manure but there's nothing better than this good textured stable manure that has these microorganisms already in it, these live microorganisms. You've got the bulk there that can add to the soil structure. So it's not just adding nutrients, it's also adding structure and places for microbes to live, food for worms to eat, and it's going to improve overall the health of the garden bed. What we do, I think $2 a bag is pretty good. I think uh, from a weight perspective, you're probably looking at 10 or 15 kilos of horse manure for two, two bucks. I get it locally, of course. We stack the bags back together and then we give it back to the, to the person who provides the manure and then they reuse the bags. And in case any of you were wondering, that's not my horse there, that's the neighbor's horses. And no, unfortunately, he's never offered to give me any manure. <laughs> I've never asked him either, to be honest. Once I've got enough manure in the bed, usually by the eyeball method, I then turn it into the soil and I make sure it's really thoroughly mixed in with the existing soil in the bed. And because this is a, a low raised bed, I can do this with a garden fork. If it was a high raised bed, I might use my ET tool just to smash it in and chop it up and mix it up. But this type of bed here, my old garden fork does a good job at doing that. So I'll just spread it out make sure it gets around all evenly and some of the bigger clumps like a lot of this is you, you've got the bigger clumps of the poo and then you've got some of the the shards and the shavings from the floor and the sawdust and that type of thing that's that's soaked in urea or horseweed I try to make sure that I get an even spacing or coverage of the, the dung, the solid dung, compared to the shavings, etc. So once I just spread it out in a section like this, I then just go through and methodically turn it over and just mix all this in. I mean, this process fluffs the bed up as well, ready for the new crops. And uh, gets the manure nicely mixed in with the soil. I've just about dug all the manure in to the end of this bed. And remember, I've got these cabbage seedlings here that have come up by themselves in a clump. So what I want to do is move these before I dig the rest of this in move them in a clump, probably put them in the garden bed behind me there, water them in, and then once I get this done, I might well 
transplant them back in here after a few weeks once this bed's rested. Um, or I might just move them somewhere else around the place and let them grow somewhere different this next coming season because they were in here. I'll give it a good clump, good clump of soil with it. Get rid of that weed. You know, these are a, a sugar loaf cabbage and I've probably got about all oh, nine or 10 seedlings here. And it'd be a shame just to discard it. Whack that in here for now. Backfill. Give it a quick water in. And that'll be good. Rightio, so all that manure is now mixed through the bed. So after I mixed it all through, I just went along, you could use a rake, but I just went along with my fork and just evened it out as best as I could, getting rid of any of the deep divots, so that the next step, which is mulching, is a lot easier and a lot more uniform. Right, I'm going to lay this mulch out pretty thick, probably three or four inches because I just want to suppress weeds and other grasses that might want to try to grow up through this manure and like I said I don't know if this manure is exactly completely weed and grass free etc. Um, it comes from a racehorsing stable, which uh, the owner, who, who I know, um, tells me that they're not fed, they're not grass fed or paddock fed, so they have less weeds in it. But that doesn't mean that there's going to be no hay or straw or that type of thing, those type of uh, seeds in the manure, and that can quite commonly come through in horse manure. But it's just a matter of, if it does, it's just a matter of weeding it like you'd just normally weed your garden anyway. You can't get too wrapped around the axles just because you get, you know, your garden infested with weeds. You've got to just keep on top of them. So this wood chip is fairly fine. It's quite nice. Well, I do end up finding that this wood chip takes a whole heap out of the soil like I've read can do, which I don't think will, but say it does, say it depletes my soil and nothing's growing in it, well what I can do is add things to it, like extra lime, um, some extra fertiliser and, and uh, see how we go. Now over time I'm hoping this wood chip really breaks down beautifully and adds to this soil. I'm sure it will. Alright, so I've finished mulching with the wood chip and now what I'm going to do is sprinkle some blood and bone on top. Now, there's the two reasons why I'm putting the blood and bone fertiliser on last and if I was going to add some lime I probably would do that now as well. And the reasons are, first of all I forgot, <laughs> I really meant to put it underneath the mulch but now coming to think about it, if I throw the blood and bone on top of the mulch here, I don't think it's going to make much difference. In fact, it might actually help break down this wood chip and also add a little bit of extra nutrients to the wood chip so that when I do part the mulch and start planting some seedlings in for the growing season, there's a little bit of extra fertilizer 
inbuilt with the mulch. So I think that should work okay. I'll just sprinkle a couple of handfuls per metre or per about every three feet. And then I'll give this a good water in. Now I store my blood and bone in this container here. It's an old uh, plastic container that uh, I got for free and I just pick, you know, picked it up uh, from a um, guy that comes around actually and does our enviro cycle and he, it carries in it some chlorine cat tablets but so I gave it a good wash out and it's a really good robust container instead of instead of chucking it out uh, I thought you know I can make use of that and I store my blood and bone in it because if you store blood and bone around here in the shed in its standard plastic bag the mice and the rodents get a whiff of it and it, they, they chew holes in the bag and before you know it there's blood and bone all out over the ground so obviously they're attracted to this because it can be a food source for them. So that's why I put it in a container like that after I buy it. And it keeps it nice and fresh as well. Now you might say also, you know, why add extra fertilizer once after you've just filled the bed with horse manure? So isn't that enough fertilizer? Well, yeah, it might well be. But a good concentrated blood and bone fertiliser like this, this is the organic stuff. It also has a little bit of extra other nutrients. Like this has um, extra potassium in it, good for fruit type vegetables like tomatoes, capsicum, those type of plants. This extra potassium is, uh, is good for them. And then of course the last thing I do is I give the bed a good watering in. And that waters the blood and bone that I've just thrown on top of the mulch. It gives that a chance to get watered into the mulch and so it's not just sitting on top. It settles the bed down, settles the mulch down, just settles everything down really. The other thing that watering in a bed after you've placed horse manure in it does is it waters down the urea or the horseweed that is amongst the mulch and the shavings and in the poo and that's I guess that's sort of important because it allows you to use this bed a little bit quicker if you give it a good watering through because it's usually the I mean fresh poo will of course burn just like urea or we would but we is probably the worst culprit when it comes to a manure mix like this and when they scrape it up out of the stables you're going to get a lot of wee in with the mulch in particular and the the sawdust or the straw and that is what can do a lot of damage to your seedlings when you plant it in so if you give it a good watering in it does tend to water down that urea Well, it's the next day and the forecast is a little bit of rain, so that's going to help settle this bed down even further. But as each day goes on, this bed is just going to be a hive of activity and underneath this mulch, the mulch where it hits the dirt is going to start breaking down first. You're going to have the worms coming up and turning over all that manure and eating through it and the bacteria and all those other critters and animals working in this bed before I plant anything in it. Now I'm going to give it about two weeks rest. That's what I normally do with a bed that I've newly manured like this. If the manure is sort of well rotted and, and not too wet. So if it was like there was a few bags that were a little bit new, uh, fairly new poo uh, and that's okay because it's spread out amongst the bed here but say if it was all new stuff and really wet and heavy 
well then I might rest this bed for a couple of months or even get that manure and stick it down in my third compost bay and just leave it rest there before I even put it into the garden bed but generally I'll just throw it in the garden bed and then realize that I've just got to keep checking that bed after a few weeks which I will do I'll grab a handful I'll sniff it I'll check it out see if it's not too wet and not too um, not going to burn those seedlings off or the seeds that I'm going to plant in here so that's the way that I'll work it now I don't always add manure to a new bed I only added manure to this one because I wanted to improve the soil structure you don't just add manure to a bed because you want extra fertilizer I mean you can I'll top up all my beds with some of chicken and quail manure from down the back and I'll bring it up and that'll that'll add an extra free amount of fertilizer to my garden I generally don't even have to add any extra fertilizer purchased from the store like my blood and bone that I normally like to use so the point is though for this bed you can see that although the medium was quite nice and the, the soil there is nice and black it did lack a little bit of extra structure and if you squeeze that together it fell apart fairly easily and what I wanted was you squeeze it together and it and it just holds slightly and then crumbles away that that's a good that's a good sticky soil you don't want it too wet that it clumps like clay but you want to sort of you want it to be able to hold some water as well and that's why I added the manure for the soil to help the soil structure not just for the fertilizer though of course fertilizer is the extra good part about it so therefore like my other long bed that I've just refurbished uh, about a week ago or maybe two weeks ago that bed there was I didn't add any extra manure to it I, all I did was put a bit of lime in there because I was growing tomato plants I've started tomato seedlings in there and I mulched it with not wood chip I mulched it with my standard sugarcane mulch because it spreads easy it's nice and cheap it keeps the weeds down and I threw in a bit of blood and bone not every bed needs to be manured every season in fact this bed here it, it may well last a couple of years before I decide to put some more manure in you can over manure a bed if you put too much and I've done this before in my early days of gardening I've got overzealous and I filled a garden bed full of as much manure as possible thinking that it would be better um, but all it does is turn the soil like clay and it gets too heavy and it holds too much water and then you can't grow anything in it either so if you feel that the bed has become too heavy after you've added manure or you've added too much well, then you just got to take out a little bit and throw in a little a bit of extra mulch or some more garden soil and mix it in until it uh, gets a good squeezy medium where you squeeze it and the soil holds for a bit but it doesn't clag together or you can't squeeze sort of water out of it that's the way I do it anyway well I hope you got something out of this video it was a long video I wanted to go from way to go and I wanted to chat as I did it um, so that I could get across as many points as possible and what was going through my head while I do this stuff thanks a lot for watching don't forget the website selfsufficientme.com give us a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already bye for now